Good afternoon. Am I audible, please? Yes. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Rajiv Ranjan Singh. Uh, I'm a lecturer in cybersecurity at uh, Glasgow Caledonian University, United Kingdom. And I'm happy to present our paper uh, with our co-authors, Mr. Ajay Kumar, who is in the audience right now. Uh, Nikita Sharma, Vaishali Rana, and Professor Indra Chatterjee from Busan, South Korea. So our paper is Neuroadaptive Incentivization in Healthcare Using Blockchain and uh, IoT. I'm sure most of you have seen this news yesterday, where the head of uh, WHO has warned that the world must prepare for the next pandemic and that this pandemic can be even deadlier than this. Now, such a news, I mean, we, we, we are already aware about uh, all these uh, developments, but it does put a lot of, lot many questions in perspective. What happened during COVID-19? So basically COVID-19 exposed our uh, fragile uh, healthcare systems at the global level, if we, if we may say so. But after COVID-19, the world has started witnessing a renewing strengthening of the health infrastructure. There are obviously many challenges uh, that the patient did not engage themselves. Uh, the treatment was uh, poor. The quality of treatment uh, was not up to the, uh, you know, standard. And then there were some data security concerns that if you are collecting the data electronically, if you are trying to do, uh, you know, electronic health management, uh, and if you if you are running short of health professionals, what can be done? Now all these problems cannot be solved overnight. But obviously, there are two possible solutions. One of the solution is that we improve the present health infrastructure, train more health professionals, build more hospitals, uh, you know, build more uh, research facilities and all. And the second one is, can we control the number of patients? Now, this might sound laughable, but controlling as in, can we make them self-sufficient? So that they do not need to be provided um, personal guidance. They do not need to be provided uh, personal diagnostic or uh, cons consultation. So how can we do that? We can do that. We propose that we do that by giving them incentive to keep themselves healthier. So this is the basic, basic idea of, of the paper because we believe that the research must be something which can be used for uh, masses. So we know that there are various emerging technologies already in play, like IoT. So I have this Fitbit, or you we use sleep monitors. There are some implant device, implantable devices which are in, in the body. Uh, all of these are various sensors that collect our healthcare data. Now these data can then be, you know, uploaded on a server. They can be collected and then a process. So there are these these are already there. There are blockchain-based technologies which are used to then analyze this data and share this data with the specific stakeholders, making sure that the security, privacy, and integrity of the data stays intact. Once we have these you know, electronic data, uh, can we use neuroadaptive principles? Neuroadaptive principles, principles based on behavior. No one, I mean, in, in general, we do get a lot of guidance from the government, from the NGOs, from the society that we should do this during this uh, emer COVID emergency. We had a lot of do's and don'ts. Obviously, people people follow to a certain extent. But what if you are giving a personalized recommendation? What if you are giving, Rajiv, you should do this because your body count is like this. Because your blood pressure is this, you should be uh, doing these exercises and so on. So if this happens, then the quality of treatment will obviously improve. So we propose to revolutionize the healthcare incentives by augmenting the whole system by blockchain and IoT technology and unleashing the power of neuroadaptive techniques. Our paper uh, has four major contributions. Uh, we have done an extensive review uh, of research and contribution of various research papers which have applied IoT and blockchain technology. We have proposed a framework for incentivization in healthcare using blockchain and IoT, uh, how the health behavior can be enhanced using neuroscience, and finally, 
to involve all these concepts into an incentive based systems. Uh, to start with, we have to understand the current problem. So, in the current problem or traditional healthcare system, the, one of the major issue is lack of personalization. Uh, we are talking about one size fits all and we fail to account for individual differences and preferences. Uh, when the government or a society comes up with regulations, comes up with suggestions or recommendations, uh, they, are, they are not personalized, they are not customized and that is a problem. And it leads to limited patient engagement because they say, well, it's for everyone and everyone's responsibility is usually no one's responsibility. So people do follow out of fear, but we, we are not here to create fear. We want to motivate them rather to make them uh, fearful. Another issue is whenever we are dealing with data, obviously data integration has its own challenge. Uh, trust is a challenge. Privacy is a challenge. Now, I'll, I'll talk one by one into the traditional uh, or uh, the transformative power of blockchain and IoT. So first of all, what can IoT do? Real-time patient monitoring is one of the major benefit of any IoT based sensor because you don't have to go to the doctor, the doctor doesn't have to come to you. So using IoT devices, they can do real-time patient monitoring, they can do, they can provide remote healthcare uh, delivery. And this is actually in practice already because uh, nowadays there are devices which can actually take your blood pressure in the real time. They can take your ECGs. Uh, you can send it uh, to, to the doctors already in India, uh, obviously not IoT based, but uh, we have, you know, doctors on uh, audio call, doctors on video call. There are various apps through which you can do them. We use WhatsApp to, uh, you know, share share the information. That's not an ideal situation. We are not talking about that, but we are talking of a situation where the data is uploaded automatically to the server, and then uh, it is processed under the guidance of a medical medical professional. So all these connected medical devices will provide a network, and which can be used to map or create a personal medical profile of any individual. So that that's IoT for you. For example, we have a patient. Uh, the patient can, let's say, has three things. One is the wearable device. Then you have, you know, the heart rate monitor sensor or blood pressure sensor. All this data is going to IoT cloud. We can store this data. We can use analytical processing. This is where we are talking about neuro adaptive techniques. And this health report is generated under uh, the guidance of a medical professional. And obviously on the wearable devices, you can also get alerts and all of that. The second stage is what is the use of blockchain. So when, when we have this kind of data, medical data is usually very, very personalized data and it best utmost care must be taken to ensure that the data doesn't leak, uh, that the data doesn't fall into wrong hands. So secure patient data management is a, is a big, uh, big uh, plus uh, under the use of uh, blockchain interoperability among healthcare provider this is this is one of the major factors because right now what we are doing is if we have let's say um, if we are going for an insurance every insurance company asks you that you should get these tests done from this clinic you should get these tests done from this clinic or our person will come to you and so on if we have a system under blockchain then all we need to do is we need to uh, give the reference or we need to trustworthy, you know, uh, provide the reference and share, we can securely share this information with any, any of the uh, healthcare providers and that then that, that will be all. Decentralized uh, clinical trials will obviously uh, be possible if we have, uh, you know, blockchain and if, if these things are decentralized, then they will improve trust and data integrity. So something like this, you have, uh, you know, patient which can share the data with any of the uh, insurance companies or government, universities, research institutions. This data will be shared and uh, after acquisition, permission and integrity verification, this data can be shared by, uh, can be used by clinicians and researchers for their analysis. And then uh, th this is how the whole, uh, you know, segment works. The third, the advantage of this is obviously improve transparency and interoperability. Uh, you are talking about better data security, 
and personalized and uh, proactive healthcare. And the third point is about neuroscience and uh, health behavior. So various uh, research in neuroscience has demonstrated that the brain influences health habits. And if there are financial incentives and other rewards, then the brain's reward system results in enhanced motivation and behavioral change. So can we design more effective therapies for individuals that leverage this power of brain to encourage healthy habits? So if you are told, you know, if you walk daily for 500 steps in the morning, you will have lower blood pressure or lower blood sugar. People do listen to these uh, issues. And when, when the doctors tell them, people, people do listen uh, to the recommendations. So the framework that we propose is incentivization framework, and it is built around blockchain to manage and identify individual data. We can merge IoT technology with various security services. Obviously, this will be needed to have uh, authentication, access control, and safe data execution for the healthcare sector. And uh, IoT is obviously combined with blockchain. Uh, sorry to interrupt, sir. Yes. Uh, two minutes, please. You have two minutes now. Okay, okay. So uh, finally, our, our proposed framework has, you know, these five steps. We are talking about collecting the health data from smart IoT devices, various variable one. We are storing and distributing data using blockchain, uh, using smart contract to securely share the data. Now we have that uh, data engine or analysis engine to identify patterns based on that patterns. And with the intervention of, you know, trained medical professional, we are recommending the individual uh, health treatment outcome and also based on incentive. Now, when we are talking about the incentive, what is the incentive and what kind of incentive they are getting? The incentive can be anything. It can be money, it can be cryptocurrency, it can be tokens, it can be points. It can be given by the government, it can be given by the university, it can be given by the school or the research institutions. And what are we talking about? We are talking about a simple test form as you can see on the screen. So we have in every test, we have some biological reference and we have some specific observed value. So if let's say patient X has an observed value outside of the uh, reference interval level, two things, if you bring your values within the reference parameter, you will get some incentive. Also, if you keep on maintaining that within reference level, you also keep on getting what is the offshoot? What is the final result? The final result is that person makes lesser visits to the clinical clinic. That person makes lesser visits to the doctor. And finally, the quality time of the doctor, the medical professional, it becomes freer so that they can attend to more chronic, you know, patients, which, which do require, you know, personalized and physical uh, health care. So they, they cannot be diagnosed or treated by you know, all these, all these mechanism. So, uh, this implication of neuroadaptive incentivization will obviously be enhanced patient satisfaction because you are getting a personal report card, personal, personalized that you did this. Okay. Because of this, uh, because of you, you maintained your blood pressure. Now you can take off your medicine or we are reducing the strength of your medicine. We are happy to recommend that, uh, improved healthcare outcomes will obviously be uh, there and finally the efficient uh, resource allocation. Uh, we have in conclusion introduced a novel approach which will take off possibly the, uh, the strain or reduce the strain on medical infrastructure by incentivizing patients, leveraging black blockchain and IoT technology so that there are improved patient outcomes and significant reduction and we have a detailed process on how to avoid incentives. There are some future research directions, but I will not go into that for paucity of time. Um, thank you, and I welcome if you have any questions. Uh, uh, thank you, some Rajiv. Questions. Uh, any questions? Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you, and uh, thank you, Professor Singh, for such a nice uh, presentation on use of. Uh, blockchain and iot and iot has become very clear and also blockchain but i have two small questions one Speaks. is what type of blockchain will be used here it will it be a private blockchain or a public blockchain can be used and other is who will pay the incentives like you are telling there are some incentivization 
will who will pay that means from where the money will come okay so so it's a very good question first of all so we are not talking about private blockchain or public blockchain so for example on a high level we have in india something like digilocker right now information from digilocker can be shared with anyone so we can have a government based system in which you can uh, you can you can get the data uh, securely you can have a google based system so for example i am wearing fitbit if i am maintaining my health within the parameters suggested recommended by google google can give me additional one month of uh, you know paid subscription so it's not always money that comes into your account it can be in terms of token it can be in terms of money i'm not saying that but uh, you have all kinds of possibility so we are not restricting anything to uh, specific uh, issues now where the money will come from obviously the money that we are saving on uh, by efficient use of medical infrastructure so a lot of time of our doctors will become free if this time was not free we would have invested more time or the doctors would have invested more time in seeing the patients because we have reduction in that cost we can take that cost in improving the technological aspect and some of them can actually be given uh, to uh, uh, to the patient in forms of money and also in the points so what we are discussing in our paper is not only the money but also for example if you go for insurance and at your age your insurance is let's say 50000 per year but if you show them you know this is my online medical record and this is my score so it is very similar to what is your civil score so your civil score determines how many banks are ready to give you loan in the same way we can talk about a uh, health score so the health score will determine what various kinds of incentives that you can get uh, if you are going to purchase a medical health plan or uh, you know in insurance plan i i hope i have answered your question sir yeah yeah thank you